Welcome back to my Excel VBA for Professionals course. My name is Alex Louis. Previous videos, you've seen how to go through the input process and output steps. And so far, what we've been covering are just inputs that you declare as variables, assign a data type, and then initialize the value. Now, in the real world, your input is not going to come from you setting values on your macro or your VBA. The input is going to come from your actual Excel sheet. And today I'm going to show you how to read from cells and I'm going to show you how to write to them. Let's take a look at a simple example here. Let's say we have the following values. One, two, three, four. Now, in VBA, the way that we want to, we are able to access the cells on, on your spreadsheet is we have a reserved word called cells that has two parameters passed in. Two, we call them two arguments passed in. Before we actually use cells, let's declare a variable. As you see, these values are integers. And we're going to declare a variable of integer type just to hold them somewhere. So let's do that. My cell value as integer. The rest is pretty easy. What I want to do is I want to take this and instead of what we've been doing initializing things like 34, 343, I want to use my cells reserved word to access my spreadsheet value. And in spreadsheets, the way it works is you refer to them by a row column relationship. For example, this value is at row one, column one. Row, you should you should be able to identify by the number one. And the column would be, you would just do the the, the value here, which is a one, take one. So here it would be um, actually column two. We're gonna we're gonna eventually get to the point where we can refer to them by b1 or b2 or ac but first let's just learn the concept of cells this particular value would be row 2 column 1 so it would be 2 1 this row would be this value would be 3 1 and this would be 4 1 if i want to access this particular value then all i would have to do Let's just say cells of 1, 1. And you see here the IntelliSense, it tells you what the index, what row index and what column index you want to access. Once you do that, you can say dot value. And then if we print this out, my value at row 1, column 1 is int my cell value. Let's try and run this, and here it is. My value at row one, column one, is one. If I want the value at row two, column one, then this would change to two. Leave the column, because we're still in the first column. And we can do that. And now it's, well, we can change this to row two. Do that. So it's pretty simple. Now, now that you are able to access your cells, I can perform some mathematical operations on them if I need to do a sum or a multiplication. For example, let's say I want to add the first two, first two values here together and then write out the result. 
let's do that. If I say int cell value two as integer, you continue this with the first row, first cell, first row, first row, first column. This would be second row, first column. And we're going to declare a, an answer for the result. And we will say answer is equal to, let's, just, let's ignore that, this plus that. And I'm going to say the sum is equal to answer. So let's take a look at what I've done here. I've declared three variables. This variable is for storage, so I want to store the result somewhere, so I have to declare some type of storage result variable. These first two variables are so I can keep the value of my cells. And I ref remember, I refer reference them by using the cells keyword and passing in two arguments. These are called arguments. Pass in a row index and a column index. A row index one, column index one, that would give me this one right here. Row index two, column index one, would give me that value right here. So then after that, I'm going to add them together and store the result and answer. The result should be three. You're gonna add one, plus two, which is going to give you three. So if I do that, the sum is three. Obviously, in the real world, we are not going to write out the result to the user. Perhaps most of the time, I would say 98% or 99% of the time, you want to put the result in another cell. And to do that is very, very simple. For example, we're still going to use the concept of rows and columns and let's say I want to put the result in this particular cell what I would do is I would say cells of row 5 column 1 is equal to the result of this value of this sum if we take a look I already have the result here so now all I have to do is just reference that cell so I'm just going to copy and paste, and we're going to change my row to be equal to 5, because I want to put my result, which is answer, into my row index 5 and column 1. Row index 5, column 1. Let's run this. Nothing's going to happen because we're not we're no longer writing to output. But if you go back to your Excel sheet, you'll see the result here, which is three. Two plus one is three. For homework, I suggest you try and put the result not in row five, but try and put it in row two, column four. See if you can do that row 2 column 4 and if you want to contact me for any results you can always hit up my website at parttimeadjunct.com thanks